Hey guys, it's Josh with Budget Mechanic. Now, when your car starts developing a problem, often the first sign is gonna be an unfamiliar sound that you hear when you're driving. In this video, I wanna talk about the top eight noises that your car will make and how to diagnose them. Number one, a screeching or grinding sound coming from your wheels, most likely low or worn out brake pads. So most brake pads are designed with a little indicator built into them that squeak when your pads are getting low and need to be replaced. Now if the pad material completely wears away, the backing, the metal backing will rub on your rotors and make a really bad grinding noise and it'll ruin your rotors. Now we have a really good brake sound video that we've already done that you can check out in the link above. Um, but the basic idea of this is you just want to get that wheel off and check out your brake pads and your brake rotors. Two a chirping or a squealing sound coming from your engine compartment. Now, this may be a constant noise or just when you start the car up first thing in the morning. And it's most likely a loose or worn out belt. So a lot of your things in your engine are driven by belts and your alternator is driven by a belt, your power steering pump, your AC compressor. Now, when all of those things are driven by one belt, it's called a serpentine belt, but oftentimes the individual components like your alternator will have its own belt. And when those belts get old, stretched, cracked, oily, they start slipping and that's where you're gonna get that squealing, chirping noise. So if your car has multiple accessory belts um, and you're having trouble figuring out which one it is, one thing that might help you is start the car up when it normally makes a sound and then play around with the steering wheel. See if it changes the sound, makes it come or go. Could be then something to do with your power steering pump belt. Uh, play around with the AC, turn it off and on. If that changes the noise, it could be the belt associated with your AC compressor. So to check your belts, you wanna get under your hood and just find like where your stuff is. So your power steering uh, pump, your alternator, here's a AC compressor, all belt driven. Sometimes it'll be on the side of your motor depending how things are set up. Um, so I'm gonna look under this cover here and I've got one of my belts right here. So what I'm checking for is, is it frayed, is it split? Um, I can turn it a little bit and check the ribs if they're cracked, dry rotted. Um, and then I shouldn't ever be able to really turn a belt past 90 degrees. If I'm able to turn it all the way around like this really easily, it's probably too loose. And um, some cars have belt tensioners, either automatic or, or you have to set them. And those can also fail. Um, so you want to just make sure that your belt tensioner is producing the, the right amount of tension if you have one. Three a groaning or a whining when you're turning the steering wheel coming from under the hood, gonna be low power steering fluid or an air leak somewhere in the system. So you find your reservoir, find the cap that says power steering, and some of them are gonna be clear. You'll see the level written on the outside. Others will have a dipstick like this, and you'll check your level. This one's actually a little low. Another problem that they can have though is your level may be fine, but while the car is running, a lot of bubbles will be produced inside the reservoir. So you can actually run the car, open the cap, and look, and it'll be really milky, and there'll be a ton of like micro bubbles, like a latte in there. If you see that, it means air is somehow getting in and causing that noise. If you let these problems go on too long, you'll end up permanently damaging the power steering pump, and then you'll have to replace the pump in order to fix that noise. Number four. A groaning or a rumbling sound when you're driving on the highway fast and it actually gets louder the faster you go. This is going to be your wheel bearings or your tires. So this high speed rumbling sound with the tires and the bearings is probably one of the hardest to diagnose. But a couple of little tricks are um, getting that car on a nice smooth highway going pretty quick and shifting to neutral real quick and see if the sound goes away. If it goes away, it could be something to do with your engine and transmission. But if it stays, it's gonna be something with your wheels. And often it's that tire or the wheel bearing. Wheel bearing is nothing you can really see. It's something you can only really hear. And one thing you can try to do is weave side to side going on down that highway and see if the sound changes sides, goes away, and that can indicate the wheel bearing. Tires are a little bit easier. You can actually physically see them. Are they worn out? Are they bald? Are they bulging? Um, those can be signs of a, of a failing tire that will give you that sound. Number five, a clicking sound coming from underneath the car up front when you're making really hard turns left or right. 
it's going to be your CV axle going bad. So if you're hearing the clicking sound when you're making slow left or right turns, chances are you're also feeling a shaking or a vibration in the steering wheel as you're accelerating onto the highway. As soon as you let off the accelerator, that shaking goes away. A CV shaft is like a steel shaft, connects your gearbox and your wheel, and it's got a joint on each end covered by a rubber boot. And pretty much all cars have them up front, one on each side. Some cars have them in the back as well, you need to be aware of. So in order to check your CV shaft, see if it's going bad, you need to get under the car and take a look. What you're looking for is this boot having a split or a crack in it. They're supposed to be filled with grease to lubricate the joint. What happens is these get old and cracked and they let the grease out and they let the dirt in and it destroys the joint, which is why you're hearing the clicking sound. So if this boot is split and or you're seeing really thick grease splattered all around from this uh, grease being released, you'll see signs of it being sprayed all over the place. Um, also another check you can do for the internals of the joint is you grab the shaft and you push it forward and back. So not side to side this way, but front and back towards the front and back of the vehicle. And if there's a significant amount of play in it or rattling, there's a little bit in this one, that means your CV joint could be bad. So the majority of the time, if you have a failing CV axle, you're gonna see either that split boot or you're gonna feel that play front and back in the shaft. Sometimes you won't see either of those symptoms in a failing shaft and you just have to replace it in order to find out if that's what it was. Number six, a clunking sound when you're driving over rough road or over bumps. Could be a lot of suspension things, but often it's just your stabilizer links. In my experience, the stabilizer links are one of the most common culprits for suspension noise. And they're really easy to diagnose and cheap to fix. So I always start there. You can find them behind your wheel, usually behind, but sometimes in the front. Um, and you can usually turn the wheel one way or the other and get access without removing the tire, but sometimes you have to take the wheel off to take a good look. But let me show you what you're looking for. So this is what your stabilizer link looks like. It connects your stabilizer link usually to your shock, and it's gonna be a vertical bar. Some of them are real short, some of them are long, but they're all gonna have a joint at each end um, with a boot, a rubber boot around it that keeps the grease in. And just like a lot of suspension elements, what you're looking for is a split boot letting the grease out on both ends, and you grab hold of it and you try to twist it. You try to rotate it on its pivot points, top and bottom like this. And if it's real easy to turn or floppy, then it's worn out. This one is, I can move it by hand. I sh a brand new one I wouldn't be able to move by hand. This one's not terrible, but uh, it's still movable. Also, you're just looking for any signs of other kinds of damage, like wearing or, you know, bend, or in this case of this one, the bolt is actually backing off and this thing is completely loose inside the bar. That's definitely causing noise. So this one needs to be replaced for sure. And it's just a nut on each end that you have to remove to pop them out. So I've even done these without removing the wheel before. Um, so real simple to do. So while the stabilizer links or sway bar links as they're also called are a really common and easy to diagnose and repair cause for suspension noise, there are obviously lots of elements to suspension. And if you wanna know more about how to diagnose all those different parts and the noises they make, we have a great video that we've already made on it, which you can check out at the link above. Seven, a buzzing or a rattling sound at certain speeds or RPM, probably gonna be an exhaust shield. So the different elements of your exhaust system, from your exhaust manifold at the engine, to your catalytic converter underneath, to your muffler out back, they're all protected by thin metal shields that can get rocks in them, the, the shields can get bent, they can rust and fall apart, and when they do that, they can often make a really loud buzzing sound at certain engine speeds or RPMs. So for example, at 1500 RPM, when your engine gets up to that speed, you suddenly hear that loud buzzing sound under your console or under the hood, out back. And really the only way to figure out where that's coming from is to get under there and poke around and see if you can replicate the sound when the engine's off. Wait till everything cools down, but then essentially you just wanna trace your exhaust pipes underneath the car and find wherever there's a heat shield. So that can be um, above the exhaust pipes protecting the body of the car from the heat, um, something like this. Or it can be a shield around like a catalytic converter or something to keep it from like lighting the grass on fire. 
and essentially you want to get around and just bang on it, kind of twang it like a guitar string, see if you can make it make the noise. Um, oftentimes rocks get stuck in here and make the vibrating, or fittings will rust and part of it will, will fall apart and bang against the others. So you just want to get under here and poke around, see if you can find the culprit. Number eight, your car sounds like a hot rod. It's just louder. This could mean you have an exhaust leak. So exhaust is meant to pass from your engine through the system out your muffler to quiet it down. If you have a hole and the exhaust is allowed to escape before the muffler, that's where you'll get a really loud noise. And the bigger the hole, the louder it will be. And if you get a big enough leak in the right place, it can actually also get inside the car. You'll smell it, and that's not good either. Exhaust leaks can be caused by a few different things. The most common is rust on your exhaust pipe or your muffler that eats away the metal and makes a hole. Uh, another reason is in the engine compartment you can have uh, rusty bolts let loose or gaskets fail and you'll actually get exhaust escaping there. So what you want to do is get the engine running, stand outside and see if you can kind of get the general vicinity of where the sound is coming from, then shut it off, let it cool down, and then you can really crawl under there and find out where specifically that leak is coming from. Now obviously there are a lot more sounds a car can make than just these eight, but I just wanted to give you the eight most common and ones that your car are probably going to make at some point in its life. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you next time.